I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. And they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministry with my one and only, the guy that sits across from me, the man that did not get whooped this weekend with the skillet. He is the notorious one, the one and only, the man that keeps the smile going, and he's lost today, but we're going to find out who he is. Since he is always an alias, his name is Pastor, wave his hand. <laughs> Pastor Charles Henry. How you doing, Pastor? <laughs> I'm doing great. Amen. You always throw those curveballs. My goodness. Amen. It ain't nothing but the fun in the house with the <laughs> Lord. We want to welcome all our listeners and those who are joining us right here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM for our weekly broadcast is Pastor Focus 2020. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, it's been a great day. You know, I'm having a wonderful time today. Having a wonderful, wonderful, blessed time today. But earlier when I was talking to you in the conversation, you asked me a question. Why is it that, or do I need you? Why do I need you? What does that mean? You know, as I was studying the scriptures recently, I was um, thinking about the body of Christ, how um, the word talks about there be many members, but yet there's one body. And it's very important to realize that there's no long rangers in the body of Christ. They, we, we need each other to survive. Amen, amen. I mean, I see that when you talk about I need you and the body of Christ, what are we talking about? A person individually, person in the home, person in the church. Uh, explain our listeners exactly what you're uh, talking about. We're talking about the body of Christ, which is each member that supplies to each other the, the nourishment that we need to survive in the church. Now, one thing I was thinking about uh, is one of the scriptures. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, From the whole body is fitly together and is compacted by which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measures of every part, make its increase of the body unto edifying itself in love. And what this is referenced to is that every joint is completely Put together it's like a natural body. You have your legs, your arms, your feet, all the different components that make you a whole person. It's the same way in the body of Christ, connected to Christ as being the head. Everything stems from him to each individual. So if one part of the body is hurting, we all suffer. Hey amen, hey amen. You know, uh, uh, our dear friend, uh, Pastor Cornell, we was talking to him earlier. And uh, sorry, he even had. Well, I'm sorry that he wasn't able to make it today. But you know, he's out on the road. But it was something that he was saying, very interesting, Pastor. He was saying the physical part. I love when you was talking about the body, the head. Yeah. And if the head is all messed up, the body is going to be lost. But you also made a statement: is that we are all one body. We are all one family. And everything is connected. But again, your question is, I need you, or do I need you? And in the body of Christ, and God is holy, eternal, almighty, and totally self-sufficient. Do he really need us? You know, one thing about that question is it's very interesting because to really study the scriptures, find out God doesn't need us, we need him. Come on now, Pastor. Come and on. we need him in order to give us the strength to endure temptation, trials, and tests, the problems that we face in life. And one thing Pastor Cornell mentioned in our meeting earlier is that sometimes we need spiritual, physical therapy. Woo, come on now. (laughs) You know, I thought about that because just like when you hurt yourself, you might have sprained your ankle or you might have broke your leg or you might have bruised your arm or some type of dilemma happened in your body that made it to not function where it needs to be. So you have to go to some form of therapy therapy to fix the condition, right? Mm -hmm. The same was in our spirit. Sometimes we get broken in our hearts, and we find ourselves starting to drift away from Christ because of the sin we allow in our lives. And one thing God showed me this morning, he says, even in that place, you need a spiritual physician to come along to show you that, hey, here's some spiritual exercise you can do to repair what's been broken in your life. I love that. I love that, Pastor, how you— gave that to us because 
as Pastor Cornell was sharing with us, that spiritual help we need. And, you know, like you were saying, if we have a broken bone, what do we do? We go have to go to the doctor. The doctor, he'll bandage up. Matter of fact, he may put a cast on it. But that should not stop you from moving. And that's one thing that I find a lot of people, when they uh, feel that they're broken or, wow, God, do I really need God? God needs me. No, he does not need us. But he would choose those. That's it. Come on now. He choose you. He, you know, he choose those to be the instruments of his righteousness to share and promote the gospel. I was thinking of something like if you break break your elbow, they have to pop that, that joker back in place, right? Mm-hmm. And it's very painful. Even when God has to pop us back in line with the Holy Spirit, it becomes uncomfortable. You know, and one thing about God, God knows it's uncomfortable, but he is for your benefit. Because if you don't allow Christ to reconnect you back to the alignment of the Holy Spirit, you'll find yourself being dislocated in your spiritual joints to where you cause the whole body to suffer. I like that. So in other words, you're sharing with us that God really don't depend on us or anything. You know, uh, he, he, he don't suffer. Ain't that interesting? That is. God That's do amazing. not suffer with nothing. He don't lack nothing, but he will help us in the time of need. And I love that when God said, I am who I am, when it's time for me to be who I am. You know, and the question again, does he need us? You know, and we don't, he don't need us, but we need him every day to know how to make it in this life. One thing I realized, too, that as the body of Christ, we are connected together Socially, mentally, and emotionally. And one thing I found out from studying the scriptures, I even preached this message this past Sunday, is that every member of the body has its own function. You have your sight, your taste, your smell, your touch, your hearing, all of the five components of the sense of human being. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so as we recognize when one sense begins to malfunction, the other senses kick in and overdrive to make sure the body continues to function, right? I love right? that. I love that. So then God showed me, said, just like he said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that, bo- that one body, being many, are one body, also also is Christ. So Christ makes us the whole body by we stand connected to him. Well, why is it so hard that we want to continue to be disconnected from him? Because of pride, rebellion, haughtiness, stubbornness, sin in our lives. We get comfortable and complacent uh, living in a, in a, a separated life from Christ. Instead of being connected, we get disconnected because of our mindsets. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No. And, and that's one thing God showed me. He says, in order for the body to function, the mind has to be transformed. From darkness to light. The mind has to be go through the metamorphosis, change from unrighteousness to righteousness. So we have the mind of Christ. Because if Christ is the center focus of our lives, then we cannot live disconnected from the source. So I love that again. Your title, Pastor, was I Need You. In other words, the body of Christ. And we have the body of Christ. That means this, we are under his covering. It comes along with the full armor of God. It comes on with the comforter. It comes on with our strength and many, many blessings. And that's one thing that we need to do is understand that Jesus certainly knew <clears throat> what we were going to go through. He knew that we were going to be separated from him. But one thing he's always that gives us back. He will always give us back that spiritual therapy. Absolutely. And it's so amazing because, you know, when we realize that if he is the head of the body, then we're joined to him through salvation. You know, if without salvation, you'll never find yourself walking in the light of truth. You're always walking and stumbling in the darkness. Jesus made it clear to his disciples on one occasion. He said, if men walk in darkness, he said, because their deeds are full of darkness. Not only that, he said, if you walk in the light, you will not stumble in the darkness. And then we find ourselves stumbling back into the, the things that God delivered us from because of the choices. Like we always talk about the ear gate. What am I allowing myself to feed on in my ear gate? Or what am I allowing other people to pour into me through the ear gate? And what am I allowing myself to devour by the enemy without God? And I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought about this one, one point that God, he told me, if I continue to feed on garbage, I become a garbage collector. Mm. 
So if I'm a garbage collector, garbage in, garbage comes out. So if I put garbage in me and not righteousness, I'm filtrating my organs of my part of the body with toxins and poisons. So anything that's damaging to the body of Christ, I'm being an agent to carry out the things to destroy the body. Hey, Pastor, let's take a quick break. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020, and they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. So in other words, we've got to be very careful who we're around and allowing uh, our garbage. Because there's a lot of times people will pour their garbage up on you, S- such as you having a great day. They can give you a call. You're looking at the news. There's something negative. There's always something negative, negative. You find yourself asking, why are these things continually happen? So whether we are, as you said, a garbage collector, or I call them a modern-day spiritual hoarder, we just have so much garbage up on us, and then there's no place where God can pour anything blessings in onto you. Right, because your house is overfilled with garbage. Oh. You know, and that's one thing. I remember when I was in pest control, and they sent me to this one-man house, and he was a chain smoker. So the house was filtrated with smoke in the air, and then he collected newspaper and magazines. So the house was so full of magazines and newspapers, you have to step over these different things just to get through the house, to navigate to the kitchen, to get to the room, to even treat the house. So it was, it was unreasonable to even try to treat the house because you couldn't get to the place you needed to treat. I like that. So I got a question then. So what are you stepping over to get back to God? You know what? We need to step over our mess. You know, <laughs> step over our, our stuff that we put in place to distract us from God, or we allow other people to put it in our pathway to distract us from God. We got to have our sight redirected, focused, disciplined to get back on Christ's word and allow that word to get inside of us so that we can see clearly the direction I'm going. So how can we bring those same attitudes, mindset, back into our homes? It's going to take uh, uh, humbleness, submission, and yielding to the Spirit of God. And what I mean by that, because the body of Christ, and this is one thing that God showed me, he said, we, we are the representations that promote the gospel in the earth, which is followed after Christ. So whatever we do, either we're going to do something to enhance the kingdom of God or delay the kingdom of God from being effective in our lives. Mm. And a lot of people don't know what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is God's governing authority that lives inside of our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So if I'm walking in the spirit, he said you would not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So we can we can hinder this from being effective in us by the mindset being uh, directed in garbage. Okay. So if my mind is stuck in in the dump. I can't go nowhere. God wants me to go because I'm I'm being obscured from the light of truth. The, the word says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So if God's word is a lamp unto my feet, guess what? He's guiding every direction I need to go. So he knows there's going to be some roadblocks. He knows there's going to be some distractions in your pathway. He knows there's going to be some stumbling blocks in your way. So he knows how to navigate around those different things to get you to your purpose. Hey, man, you know, Pastor, I like that when you said that he is the light of our foot. He's going to guide and direct us. He will make our crooked roads straight. But we have to understand that we have to stay under the covering of God. I like that when you were sharing uh, um, about how he helps us, how he will help guide us. He will direct our path. Even when we fall away from him, as you were speaking about earlier, when you was talking about the whole body, each part of the body, we got to understand it's significant to do what it is created to do. The eyes cannot be the feet. That's right. The nose cannot be the mouth. The arms cannot be the hair on top of your head. Everything has to be in its rightful place, and that's where God created us, decent and in order. But our problem is, Pastor, 
We want to do our own thing. We want to separate ourselves from God. And then, like you were saying, we want to be that spiritual hoarder. We want to take on the world and bring all that garbage in. Then we sit there and look and ask ourselves over and over and over, what is happening? Why is this happening to me where God said, I gave you everything that you already need. Absolutely. So why are you bringing all this other stuff in here? And then we're so quick to blame it on him. We do. We do. Because we we allow ourselves to be deceived by the enemy. I I wrote a point down. The enemy has crept into the church to divide and destroy destroy God's children, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing uh, I was thinking of something when you said that when in our natural bodies we get a cold, what we do? We take medication, Mm -hmm. right? So when the spiritual body becomes afflicted, what we do, we need to get the antidote. We need to get the medicine of the word. Death and life in the power of the tongue. A man's belly can be satisfied with the fruit thereof. Come on, Pastor. So when I begin to get the antidote, which is the word of God, the word of God is a medicine into my body and health and, and it's a, it says health into my body and, and, and nourishment to my bones, right? So if I get the word of God and begin to speak what God says about me, to myself, then whatever the enemy tries to deceive and distract and delay the promise of God in my life, it's not going to be effective. So in other words, we disconnect ourselves from Christ. I need you, the body of Christ. And one thing we were talking about earlier uh, with you and I, Pastor, along with Pastor Cornell, I mentioned something to you all. One problem that I find with people, God has given us the two to life. But one thing that we continuously do is take the word of God and push it to the side. Pastor, how are you feeling today? Oh, man, I'm so tired. I don't feel good. What did God say about you? I feel so sick. Well, God didn't say you were sick. He said I'm a healer. That's right. And that's one thing that we continuously do. We speak. Listen to me, family. We speak trouble upon ourselves. We break that connection with Christ. We disconnect ourselves from him by Mm -hmm. speaking about things that has nothing to do with you. God said, I'm a healer. What do you say? I'm sick. I'm dying. I heard you were speaking about, and Pastor uh, Cornell said, shared something with us earlier. was speaking about a family member that spoke about an amputation that she had. If I, if I, and this happened to me, I'm going to die. You spoke that. The things that I've learned about things like that is God is keeping you alive. There's technology today that will keep you moving. So we have to look at what God has already created. Pastor, didn't he already share with us? Everything that you shall ever need, I have created it for you. I already knew you before you was in your mother's womb. So I love that when he said, whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given unto you. Pastor Charles, I already know what you're going to need. Just ask me for it. That's right. But what do we do? We doubt. We doubt because we're not having enough faith to believe what God says about me is true. I was thinking of when I went through cancer myself uh, about six years ago and I was in the hospital. I remember when my hair started falling out in the hospital. And I, I was heard God speak to me. He said, think yourself well. And I said, God, that's faith. And the Lord spoke back and said, yes, because faith calls those things to be now that they already were. So because I started believing the word of God and confessing the word of God with my mouth over myself, I that, that by his stripes I am healed, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, I recovered faster than the doctor expected because of my faith. And I was on about 12 different medications. And I spoke to God one day because I said, God, it's been five months. Why am I not getting well? And the Lord said, check your medications. And I heard that in the spirit. And so I started examining all the medications, researching medications, and found out the symptoms I was having was from the medications. So the Lord said, now take yourself off the medications. I took myself off these medications, and every time I went to the doctor, they did the blood report, everything's looking great. They said, oh, you're covering very well. I said, praise God, because I trusted in the word that God spoke to me, being part of the body of Christ, 
that I can think myself well and put my faith with, like you said, faith without works is dead. So I begin to do what God said by faith, put the works and faith together and got the results of being healed. Now, I want y'all to get this is what he said, his faith, his trust, his belief in God. We're not saying to anyone that's listening to us today is to stop taking your medication. That's not what he's talking about. And a lot of people, they are hear things and they say, well, Pastor Charles, and all, uh, they, they were saying that I shouldn't take my medication. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about you got to have that trust and belief in that's God. It. And that's if it. you have a relationship with God, God knows how to speak to you because, again, he knew what you needed. Yes, he did. That's why I said that that that. We got to have that connection with God. Like you said, I need you. I need that body of Christ. Yes. And that body of Christ is the Lord and Savior himself. Even he even showed us that, Pastor, when he was up on the cross, you know, when he yes. said, uh, yes. Father, Father, why, 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 even in the garden, why, why? He wants to know why out of everything I've came into this world for is to show them love. Show That's how it. I care That's about it. them. I'm willing to take on all the sins of the world so they shall be able to live, but yet they still moved away from me. They turned their back on me. And all I wanted to do is just to let them know. It says at that moment, Christ cried out, My God, my God, why have you? Now he's talking to the Lord. Why have you forsaken me? Yes. And one thing that I've learned about the Trinity we know that God is the Spirit, Jesus is the in the flesh, and the Holy Spirit. And one thing that I want to share with our listeners, pastors, is anytime that we're going through anything, any doubt, what we need to do is what Jesus done. Because he said every time I had a problem, he went and spoke to who? The Father. The Father. Yes, what do we do? We go straight and listen to what the world has to say. The world does not mean none of us any good. That's the way That's I personally right. feel. That's right. Because we're looking for a spiritual answer in a natural response. Ooh, say that again. You got to say that We look again. for a spiritual answer in a natural response. And what I mean by that, we rather go to people instead of going to God and listen to the Holy Spirit to give us the answer we need to get through life. So we find ourselves being distorted in our vision because I don't allow the enemy to blind me. So when the enemy comes to set things before you to blind you from the truth of God's word and God's vision he's given you and his purpose he's told you to fulfill in your life, you get stuck in, in the mindset of rebellion because we, we turn off the ears from hearing God's voice and listen to our own voice and the voice of a people. Yeah, I love that because once we're joined with Christ, nothing will separate us far from him. And that's where we have to stay. We have to stay right under the covering of our Lord and Savior. Notice, our Lord and Savior. Savior. That's and, that's and that's where we have to be at. But no, we want to just go into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the world has everything for us. You know, Christ, you don't have nothing. It was just, you brought me here and that's it. But the enemy, you know, one thing about the enemy, he would take you and, and make it seem that he's doing something for you spiritually. He is doing something for you spiritually, but it's not the spirit of Christ. We find ourselves end up being lost and in confused Absolutely. and very confused. Absolutely. You know, Pastor, I see the time is getting uh, getting away from us today. You know, uh, next week I want to talk about how the church and the body, or the other words, next week let's talk about does God really need us? <laughs> That's a good subject. Does he I really like need that. us? You know, we was talking about today, we need him, but does he really need us? You know, Pastor, uh, there's something that's going to be going on great next month. Uh, I see that your uh, Redeemed Faith, your church is going to be having a block party. So uh, I just want to invite all the uh, our listeners to come and join us next month. Uh, what, what is the date on that? August the 6th. From 11 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. You know, I know we're going to have a great time. So it's going to be fun. We want all of you all to come out next month, August the 6th from 11, 11 to 4, 11 to 3, you said it 11 is? 11 to 3. 11 to 3. And the address again is? 3223 West Lloyd Street. 
You know, and then as I always do, Pastor, I want you to give us a word of encouragement and a quick prayer before we get out of here. Amen. So we just want to encourage you to know that you are part of the body of Christ. and You can't live without the body of Christ on your own as a long ranger. So we ask that you continue to turn your life over to the Lord, walk in faith and the promise of God's word he has for your life. So, Lord, we thank you today for this word going across the airways. We pray that clarity and understanding has been conveyed to those who heard the word today to help change their lives forever. We thank you, O God, for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You keep us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And again, I'm Pastor Walter Owens of New Life International Ministries. And I'm Pastor Charles Emery, Assistant Pastor of Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. And we just want to thank everyone that's joined us today here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM for our weekly broadcast. Focus 2020. And Pastor, I want you to stay focused. I want you to keep your vision good. And we just want to send a prayer out for your lovely fiance. And I just want to tell her thank you for not using the skillet. The skillet, I'm glad that she didn't scramble you, that you could come in here in your right for mind and you could see the things that you need to see. And... Something else I want to say, but I don't know what to say. Good. (laughs) We love you till next week. God bless you all. Amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, Pastor Charles Emery. You know, Pastor, I want to welcome all our listeners to join us for our weekly broadcast, which is Focus 2020. And they can find us where? At Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM every Thursday at 2.30 PM. And what will they receive once they get here? They receive a word from the Lord, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. <laughs>